So you say you want a challenging game, huh? All right, I've saved this one just for you. Hey guys, this is Bill, once again with NSPC3. Today, we're looking at what I personally feel is one of the most difficult platforming games I've ever played on any system. This is Arrow the Acrobat, and this is card number 113 in the collection. So this is no doubt a very, very difficult platforming game. But keep in mind that difficulty does not necessarily equal bad. I think that's very true in this case, much in the same way that Zelda 2 is very difficult, but not necessarily bad. It really just comes down to your taste in games and genres, I suppose. Now, with that in mind, although the challenge is very high, there are still a number of very good things to say about this game. The graphics, the soundtrack, the gameplay. There is a score mechanic in this game that actually makes sense and gives you extra lives, and you will need them for the higher levels. Speaking of the difficulty and challenge, let's just jump into it and let's see why I've been putting this game off for so long. Oh boy, this is a rough one. Check this out. How far can you get without using any continues? On Pro, The Woods Act 2. Alright, so if you've never played this game, The Woods is level 3, and basically every act or stage, there's five acts in every level and then a boss. So, counting all that up, you've got 13 stages, if you will, that you have to complete before this challenge is considered over and done with. Now, there are some easy levels scattered throughout this game, but for the most part, this challenge will be testing your mastery of platforming mechanics as well as your sanity to an extent. Sadly, there is no way to cheese this. You gotta put in the time and the effort to study it, learn the levels, and flat out, you've just gotta be good. I strongly encourage you to watch this video before attempting the challenge on your own. So with that in mind, let's dive into it. This is Arrow the Acrobat on the Super NES. Here we go! Okay, so while this game is pretty challenging overall, there are some pretty easy levels up front, and these first two levels are no exception. So one thing you noticed immediately is that every stage has its own unique objectives here, and in this first one, you have to land on seven star platforms. Fortunately, the first two are right at the very start, so there's no reason you can't get those. Just be very careful that you don't fall down after the second one and land on the spikes below, and even then, you shouldn't because there is a parachute insurance policy right there. So just get the first two, keep moving forward. Also, one other thing you're going to notice, there are a lot of opportunities for points in this game, as I mentioned earlier. So take every chance that you get if there's an enemy in front of you, if there's an item to pick up, whether it's food or a star like that, which by the way is used as a projectile against certain enemy types. Take the time, if it's within reason, to collect as many points as you can, because every 20,000 points, you will get an extra life. So again, the key is 20,000. By the way, here's four more of the remaining five platforms, so get them very quickly, They're not too tough. And if you want, you can go over here. This is gonna give you the ability to fly for a limited period of time, so if you want to, you can go over here, fly yourself over the fire hoop. I tend to avoid fire hoops when possible because I really don't trust myself. I have died on them a couple of times by accident. It doesn't take much to kill you in this game when it comes to the spikes or the fire. Those are the two hazards you absolutely want to avoid like the plague because they will kill you very, very quickly, obviously. There are no second chances when it comes to those. But that was it. That's the first level over and done with. That was very, very fast. The remaining stages in this game will not be nearly as fast, although this one is relatively simple for the most part. Now in this stage, Circus Act 2, you have to find a key and then rescue Ariel, who's going to be in a cage. Fortunately, it's not too difficult here. So you have a unicycle here. These unicycles are kind of cool because anything you hit will be instantly killed. So you will come across them quite frequently. The first thing you want to do, of course, is get the keys. So the way you get it is to go down the first ladder you come across and move your way back over to the left. And this is where you're going to find the key eventually. By the way, the way you attack in this game, there's two different main uh, methods of attack. You have the star, but that is limited. The other one, which is not unlimited, is your jumping attack. So as you can see, it's a double jump attack, essentially. So you can jump upward or downward is a drill-based attack. So take advantage of that. And that will be not only your main source of attack, but also one of your main methods of getting around in the levels here. So by the way, did you know that sometimes you can double jump or triple jump with those double screw attacks? So it is possible. Just kind of play around with that when you can. Uh, be very careful here. Don't go all the way up with the cannon because you will die from the spikes. There are a number of death traps in this game, and you got to think that the developers were 
really getting off when they came up with some of these stupid traps here, thinking that they knew people were going to go all the way and not try to really finesse things. So yes, finesse is a thing in this game. You need to be able to control yourself and know exactly how much power to use. It's kind of like if you ever played Pilot Wings or Pilot Wings 64 with a cannonball. Yeah, you got to know exactly how much power to use sometimes. It will test you. By the way, right here, these A icons, these are hit points for Arrow. And you max out at five of them, so this is a good opportunity to learn how to use them and what they do. Continue on forward here. The next part of this level isn't too bad. By the way, these are checkpoints in case you haven't figured it out. This section here are balloons, so you're going to use balloons to float yourself across. If you do happen to fall in the spike pits, occasionally you will luck out and land on one of these little opportunities to fly here, so take advantage of them if you are unfortunate and lucky enough. And by the way, you're going to see quite a few opportunities and occasions where I did fall into the pits, but I got those nice little flying wings there. All right, now you're going to have some more cannonballs here. You can go full out with these. This is not a problem. You just have bubbles that are encasing some of these rings, so just be careful with those. Blast through three times. By the way, one thing you can think about doing here with these platforms, if you're not sure about these jumps of fate or jumps of luck, because sometimes you really don't know what's below you when you jump, right? So if you're really ever unsure and there is a ladder to climb down, just go down the ladder because you will never ever find a spike, pit, or a hazard down there below you. There might be an enemy on occasion you have to kill, but certainly nothing that will kill you outright like a spike or a flamed hoop. One more unicycle trick, take it all the way. This is going to go all the way to the exit. Watch as you kill everything in sight, pick up some point-based items, and there's Ariel in the cage. So just walk over on the right side, touch it, and there's the end of the level. So not too tricky. These first two levels weren't that bad, but they're getting you ready for what's to come. So check out these next few stages. Catch your breath, and here we go on to stage 1.3 after all these points count up. All right, and as 1.3 starts up, the objective is going to be to find more star platforms. In this case, we got to find more than double what we had in the first level, so 15. And as the level starts, you're going to see we have a small gap with a parachute that you can opt to take down. It's not required, but again, points do matter. Every 20,000, you will get an extra life. So if you want to take your time to make sure you get all those points, it may be beneficial to use the parachute item there. If you don't really care, or if you are an expert at this game, don't worry. By the way, there's an extra life. Take note of where I'm getting getting these extra lives, particularly if you've never played this game or you're not that good at platformers, you will want every life you can possibly get here. So there's an extra one for you. We'll certainly point out some more as they come. So there's the first two star platforms that we just picked up. Now for this part, you want to push the cannon over just slightly to go through the flamed hoops. Make sure you go straight through the middle. You do not want to accidentally touch the sides or you will die instantly. There's another extra life, by the way. So two free lives within the first minute of playing this stage. So very beneficial to have those out of the shoot because you will need them. Another unicycle, nothing too tricky here, but move quickly because that guy on the trapeze will throw knives, which will hurt you, obviously. You just keep on moving. You're going to have some items here. After five, you can continue to move off to the right. Okay, as we land from that fall, we're going to keep moving right. Now, we have an elephant enemy there. You're not going to see me tackle too many, if any, elephants, because they can't be killed by normal means of the screw attack. you got to throw stars at them from behind, usually. Now, here you got three more of these star platforms. Take out that enemy from the top, and then get rid of these star platforms. And the very last one has two hits. Make sure that you move immediately, or you will fall on a spiked pit and die instantly. So, get rid of those three, and then go down. Now you have another trapeze thrower, knife thrower here. So try to kill it if you can with a screw attack or a star. If not, you can take this balloon up and then kill it this way. Uh, don't do what I just did. That's an easy way to lose a life by means of a spike trap. So take note of those. There are plenty of spike traps throughout this game and you will learn to hate spikes. Among all platformers, this will probably be your least loved game when it comes to spikes, guaranteed. Now we have another unicycle. Go ahead and take it. When you hit the end of this, keep holding left because there's a spike trap there. Keep moving left. You're going to have two enemies. Kill the first one. Jump off before you hit the second one because the unicycle will not hit it. You can opt to kill it again if you want to or just move past. Now here, you're going to climb a huge ladder with four starred platforms. So take out all four of them. And then you're going to see right about there on the far right, there is a platform that you can opt to take if you want. It will lead you to an extra life, but it is considered a death trap by myself. So even though you'll get it, you'll often kill yourself trying to get out of the trap. So I advise you not to do it, especially if you're not that good at platformers. Anyway, moving on, we have those four star platforms out of the way. Another elephant we're going to jump over and avoid. Make sure you're getting all those point pickups. Trust me, you will get extra lives out of these. I think I'm going to get 
at least three or four, maybe even five when this is all said and done, just based on points. So they do add up, absolutely. There's a couple health power-ups if you need them. Now here you're going to have some enemies along with a whole bunch of spike traps and point pickups in between, so be very careful. Use your regular jumps, use your screw attack jumps if you need to, and those jumps are going to get longer and longer as you continue to move across. Okay, you're going to notice that we have some trampolines with spikes on either side of them. Be very, very cautious with those. If you are not, you will lose a life or two, so... Moving on through, we have another flamed hoop. I'm going to opt to be safe and not go through it, even though I will get a lot of points for it. So it is what it is. Just be very careful with these. Now here, you're going to have five or six starred platforms. So it's a matter of moving the cannon to the specific point where you can actually get onto the platform and then take out the rest of them and get them all done with. Now, the only problem with this is that you're going to have two or three annoying enemy clowns that will move diagonally or a star-shaped pattern. You want to try to get rid of them as quick as you can because they are obviously a nuisance and you don't want them to be causing you to get hit as you're taking out the platforms here. Now fortunately, I don't believe, and I could be wrong on this, but I don't believe there are any actual spikes on the ceiling that could accidentally kill you. So I don't think you have to worry too much about shooting yourself with max power on the cannon. Again, if somebody wants to prove me wrong, go ahead, please do so at your own risk. But we're going to keep on moving here. We're going to backtrack a little bit to push this cannon forward. And we need to do that because the only way to advance, short of glitching, is to push that cannon to the far right and go through the bubble hoop. Now, you want to be really careful when you're backtracking to lure that clown out of the way. Because if you go too far, that clown will follow you, but he will actually respawn on the other side. So it'll look like you have two clowns attacking you here. So trust me, don't go back past the save point if you can help it. Now, you get through, you bust through the bubble hoop, we're gonna have another one up here. So, bust through as many of these as you can. After you bust through it the final time, you're gonna leer off to the right, just like this, and you're gonna keep going over left. And I believe we've gotten all of the star platforms out of the way at this point, so yes, we have. There we go, that's the end of 1.3. So that one was a little bit trickier than the first two, definitely, but it's still nothing we can't handle. You just have to be aware of where the spike hazards are. And beyond that, you should be able to get through it relatively easily. Now this next level, still in the circus, yes I know, we need to find 25 magic hoops. So we already know what a magic hoop is. Now it's the basis of a level. So we have 25 we have to get through, which is obviously quite a few more than 7 or 15 starred platforms. But they're very easy relatively to find. And the nice thing is when you find them, you'll find them in huge chunks. Save this first one here. So go ahead, jump through the first one. Easy peasy. And then the rest of them will come in chunks of three, four, or even five. So just go ahead and watch. Again, the nice thing about Arrow, I mentioned this way back in one of the posts I made prior to making this video, but Arrow is pretty linear, so you really shouldn't have too much trouble finding what you need to find. By the way, here's a couple stars up here, so if you really want to try to take out some of these elephant enemies, feel free. One, two, three, four, five hoops. Boom, that was really nice. I wish they were all that simple, but... Usually from this point forward, those hoops are going to come in chunks of twos and threes. And we've still got quite a few more, 19 more to go. Now here, this point right here, this is one of the most annoying points in this stage. You have to watch where I jump, diagonally shoot yourself up. You need to hit that at the exact point or you will kill yourself on the spikes and cost yourself a life or two. Very annoying. I had quite a few deaths and resets because I lost too many lives there. There's an extra life. Make sure that you get it. It is worth the effort if you think you can correctly get yourself over these spike pits here. You're going to take this balloon back up after you get it. One, two, three, four. Very nice. And here's another one. One. So that's five rings you just got right there. So if you can, trust yourself, get the extra life, and then get the five rings out of the way. And here we got a bubble machine. Interesting, right? Kind of reminds me of Secret of Mylon. Or Mylon's ca Secret Castle. Uh, yeah. Bubbles are not my favorite Thing to play with in video games. Anyway, I digress. Now we got to get up here. This can be annoying as well. You want to take those bubbles to get up on these platforms here. Now here you're going to have trampolines. Try to land on the trampoline on the far side like this because if you notice very carefully, landing on the side of the trampoline will not bounce you and you don't want to be bouncing when you're trying to kill these stupid clown enemies here. By the way, if you bounce really high in this trampoline, there are no spike pits up there, so don't worry. You are quite a bit of items here, so get as many as you can, ride this balloon all the way to the top, and get the extra life. As soon as you get the life, that's the last one. There's a spike hazard. Get off it quickly, and go as far right as you can. 
and you're gonna have some more rings over here. Now, the rest of these rings, for the most part, are gonna be under this little ball and lever mechanism here. So let it bounce you up, and you're gonna use that to get the vast majority of the remaining rings here. So that's one, two, three out of the way. We're gonna have quite a few more to go. I'm gonna keep moving forward. Here's the next ball and lever mechanism. I think there's like two in this one, if I'm not mistaken. No, there's more, there's three. So get as many as you can. I don't believe there are any spike traps here. So we're going to ride it all the way up and continue to move on forward here. We're almost done getting all the hoops here. There are a couple at the very end we're going to try to get. We're getting pretty high up in this level. Now there is a little item pick up there that will let you fly. It's not really necessary for this part of the game, but use it if you will if you want to get over this section. A couple more hoops here. Nothing too tricky. I think there's only two at this point, so grab both of them. And there will be some tricky points coming up here with the trapeze. And I gotta tell you, the trapeze is my least favorite thing to use in this entire game. And you're gonna see why. Because it's so touchy, it's so finicky how you grab onto it. And you gotta be so precise. In some sections, there's gonna be one particular point. If I'm not mistaken, you gotta hit three or four consecutive trapezes in a row. And if you fail, you're basically screwed. It's gonna be an instant death on spikes. So. You need to know how to get on these trapezes completely, 100% perfectly, without any mistakes. So this section right here in the pool, by the way, you can't really attack in the pool, so just try to maneuver yourself in between these clowns as best as you can. It's alright if you take a hit, just you know, don't get hit multiple times. Alright, we're going to keep moving over, watch out for this elephant. We're going to have one, two, three, four rings, that was pretty nice, and that was the last four, so we got through. Uh, definitely more tricky than the first three. But you've seen nothing yet. Wait until this last stage of this act. I told you, remember that point where you got the three or four trapezes in a row? It's coming right here, and it's ugly. All right, act five, turn on all the lights. So what does that mean? So there are four switch levers in this stage, and you need to hit all four of them before exiting the level. The first couple are not too hard to find, even though it is relatively dark, by the way. Be very careful, don't do that. Uh, yeah, you could bounce yourself on the bubbles and go through the rings if you want to, or you could just simply go down there and avoid them all. Yeah, you're gonna lose out on points, but you're also gonna save a life, so it's up to you. But again, knowing how difficult this game is, you're gonna wanna conserve as many lives as you possibly can. All right, now here, this is a cannon. You have a couple options here. I am opting to push this cannon over to the far left and get through as many of these rings as I can. And one, another big reason I'm doing this is because I honestly, during this particular playthrough, I did not remember which of these holes had the extra life and the stars and the points. So this is me not remembering, I went too far, I did not finesse it properly, and oops, lost a life. Oh well, I've learned my lesson. So now, I'm just going to push the cannon all the way over to the right. If you want to experiment with these rings and these holes, feel free, be my guest. If you want to play it safe, do the smart thing, push the cannon all the way over to the right, and you're going to find one of these blue bubble hoops here. That's the one that matters. You need to bust through all the bubbles, and then once you're free to go, blast yourself up at max power all the way to the hole, just like this. And if you need to, you can do the screw jump. It shouldn't be necessary if you do it properly, though. There's no danger of being killed by the spikes, even at max power. So just be very careful, make sure you hit max power, and move over to the right. Couple more generic enemies here, a couple clowns to kill, nothing too tricky, a couple score power-ups that might give you an extra life eventually. And we should have one final enemy here, which, no, I guess not. We already got through it, through the save point. Now we're moving up. Be very careful of enemies that will not let you get by the ladder. Take them out. And we have another bubble machine. Now this one, we're gonna go up and over. We're gonna start by going over to the right. And the reason why is because there is a switch here. If you go over to the left, it'll lead you to the exit eventually, but you're gonna miss out on one of these light switches and it's gonna cause you to have to restart all over again. By the way, you could drop down right there at that pole and it'll give you a wing power up, make things a lot easier. But in my experience, I typically miss it and I end up killing myself and losing a life. So yes, it's harder to do it this way, but if you've got the mechanics down, you should be able to do it. I'm going to take this umbrella, this parachute, go down, get all the score power-ups. I'm pretty close. And we're going to keep on moving, get all the score power-ups and points. You're going to have three enemies here that can be killed by screw attacks. So there's one. There comes a second one right about here. And then the third one is going to be through these reversible gates right in here. So kill it. And we're going to go up. And we're going to go as far as we can with the screw, and we're going to jump over this way now. So we're going to go over to the left, 
climb up as far as you can. Now, if you think back, we have two of those light switch levers out of the way. We've got two more to go. This next one is going to be rather tricky. It's going to be a whole bunch of trampoline jumping with enemies and spikes in between. So it's really going to test your nerves and your ability to pay attention and see what's coming up. So be very, very careful with this one. This one is absolutely tricky until you've played it a few times. So here we go. We're pretty close to it right now. Keep moving on up these ladders. We're getting pretty high in this stage. Now, here's where it starts. Jump over the spike. As you hit the first trampoline, try to kill this enemy here with a well-timed screw attack and then get over the spike pit onto the next trampoline. It's going to be the same thing pretty much for the remainder of this hazard here. So go up and over. This next one, by the way, look very carefully. There's a spike pit. you got to go up and over two of them. Then over this next one, kill the enemy very carefully, and we're through that section. And we're going to have one more area with trampoline jumps. Very, very close. Here it is. We're going to go up and over. Get very, very high. Don't jump just yet. Up and over. Screw attack jump. And right down in here. One more of those. Continue moving over far right. And there we go. Now you have a bubble hoop right here. You could go down it. But as I've been saying for a while now, I don't trust myself with these hoops. And I really don't trust myself when I have to bash through three bubbles from above. And I know for a fact I'm probably going to hit one of those things. By the way, there's light switch number three and an extra life to boot for our troubles. So if you happen to get burned on one of those hoops, there you go. There's your life back. By the way, don't do this. This is a death trap. Uh, going over to the far right, there is a false floor, very much like Castlevania 2, giving me nightmares right now remembering that game. So, by the way, here comes the trapeze of death. Oh, I got very lucky to get that thing right there. So... The way that these trapezes work is you have to get to the chain exactly. You cannot jiggle left or right on it. It has to be exact. And right about here, I'm getting extremely lucky. I hit all three of them. And oh, I missed one. But guess what? There, I got the wing item down there and saved myself. And I got an extra life. Now, can I do it again? Let's see. Got one. Are there any more? Woo. Wow, that is probably one of the only times I have ever successfully traversed that hazard without losing a single life. Good, I don't ever want to play it again. I probably won't. All right, now, ooh, check this hazard out. So you have a youth cycle, which leads into a spiked wall. Now, the way you get down here, you hit X. You jump off the unicycle, hit X, you start to hang. Hit up on the D-pad like that, you get back up on the wire. So just to review, you're going to get to a point where you have another one of these. You're going to get off the unicycle, jump down hit X to hang, and then pull yourself all the way across. When you get to the appropriate point, you will hit up on the D-pad. By the way, this is a pretty long corridor right here. <laughs> yeah, imagine doing this in real life. I don't think so. Hit up on the D-pad, continue to walk across, and there's your final switch, and there's the exit. We are finally done with the circus, all five acts. Oh, by the way, we still have a boss to go through. And here he comes right now. So the boss of the circus is going to be called Mr. Stilts, and it's actually two Mr. Stilts. You have two enemies here on the left and right hand side of your screen, and you're going to see exactly what's going to happen here as soon as the scores stop going. Here we go, boss act, Mr. Stilt Brothers. So, they're on stilts, obviously. They're very tall, right? And they're tossing Molotov cocktails, essentially, to each other. Uh, pretty dangerous, to be sure. So the way you take them out, you just have to dive bomb into them from the left and right. I strongly suggest that you alternate, go left and right one at a time. And you're going to notice as they drop these flaming Molotovs down here, you got to be very careful not to accidentally stop and jump on the fire because you will take a hit. If you take too many hits, obviously you're going to die. So just keep moving back and forth like this. It is expected that you will probably take a death. So if you do, not a big deal. Occasionally, you may be able to beat these bosses without dying. I have done it before. But again, if you take a death, it's not the end of the world, so don't feel too bad about it. Okay, we're finally done with the circus, and we're moving to one of my favorite levels in the game. This is now the fun park, and we're back to finding the starred platforms again. Oh boy, yes I know. But at least we're outdoors now. I think that the scenery here is much better. The only problem is the game is starting to get a lot harder now because they know that you know what to look for. Now this first section, be very careful here, that item on the ground looks like chomping teeth like the munchers from Mario 3. That's exactly what it is. If you touch it, you will die. So your first two starred platforms are here. Now get the first one. You're going to take the balloon up. This is a death trap, but if you play it carefully, start to screw right there and come down. You can get that life without killing yourself. So that one is not as tricky as some of the ones that you will see later in this run through here. So 
feel free to get that one. Continue to make your way over. Here is the next star platform. Try to get those star pickups. They will come in handy when you try to kill some of the tougher enemies. Go on down, continue to move on down. And we're almost down at ground level here. These clown enemies are really annoying. They can only be killed from behind with the stars, but you don't have to kill them, so don't worry if you don't. Now you're gonna have this ball and lever hazard here, and there will be, this thing will start to move. An opportunity to move up. There's your next star platform, but be very careful because there is a spiked hazard on the ceiling there. Be very, very cautious. You will probably need to move or screw yourself over there. And we're gonna continue to move on down here and nothing we haven't seen. I don't recommend, by the way, don't go over to the left here because there's a clown enemy you can't kill from the front, but do happen to complete this. There's a health pickup if you need it. And we're gonna keep on moving now. This is a little Ferris wheel ride of sorts. So you have to take it to get to the next star platform. So be very careful. Watch out for the spikes, by the way, on the side. That's an easy way to take a death. All right, and here's your next star platform. You're gonna have one more to go. So take this one out, continue moving over to the right. You could go over left here, but there's no reason to. So just keep moving over to the right. You can probably see, by the way, if you're paying attention, the very last star platform is down to the right. Go down through these hoops. There's quite a, like six of them if I counted correctly. All right, and you're gonna go through this little gate. And the way you get this last one, here is a flame shooting fireman, and that's kind of awful. I hate that. All right, this can be a very ugly death trap. Look at all the spikes here. You need to have precise timing here or you will take multiple deaths. So be very careful, line up your shots, line up your screws, and there's your last platform. Jump and shoot, get the health power up if you need it, come back down. Ooh, my goodness, I probably should have taken a death there. Very lucky I didn't. And ooh, took a hit or two there. That wasn't very fun. And ooh, good lord. And you gotta remember where everything is here. It's just not a fun experience. All right, we have a Ferris wheel. We're gonna start taking up to the top, and this is gonna eventually lead us to the end of this stage here. So let's see where it goes. We're gonna take it up, and you probably remember this section before, right? It led to one of our starred platforms, which we've already gotten. But now, here's the difference. This is going to be the alternate route we take that will lead us to the exit for the stage. Instead of going left, we're gonna keep pushing over to the right. We're gonna go through this little clown, scary-looking tent here, but before we go up that ladder, Go on top and get all of these score pickups here. Kill the enemy. That will bring you very close to getting an extra life or certainly push you on the way to get one. Climb this extremely annoyingly tall ladder. Move across. Kill that enemy if you can. And you're going to have one more that you can't kill. So go underneath it when it's safe. And we're getting pretty close now. I believe we've gotten all the star platforms. So now we have to make our way over this long spike pit. And we're going to wait for this thing to come down and over. Go through the hoops if you want. It's not really necessary at this point in the game, but we're gonna do it anyway, because I want some points, why not? And here we go, wait for it to come down. Go all the way over. I believe we're there. Go through the picks, go through the rings if you want to. Long, long ladder, all the way up. And we're pretty close right now. We're gonna have one more annoying pit hazard that we have to deal with here. Here's a bridge that lights up when you cross it. It's kind of cool. All right, now you have to jump 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 and you're gonna have to screw yourself over there too so kill the enemies this is very annoying because if you hit the enemy and don't kill it it's gonna knock you back into a spike pit but we got through it so that is level 2-1 out of the way in the books and we're gonna move on to some tougher ones for sure and thankfully we didn't lose many if any lives in this stage so here comes the next one 2.2 this is gonna be a complete and utter nightmare for you if you have not studied it ahead of time Ride the roller coaster. So this is very much a rail gun or a rail level, if that makes any sense, an auto scroller, where you have the option to duck and jump. And if you think back to Donkey Kong Country, where you're in those minecart levels, this is the exact same thing. The only difference is that there are no enemies you have to worry about killing. So pay attention very closely, duck, jump. You're gonna have a number of extra lives you can get here. So there is probably five extra lives you can get at least. And oh, that's ugly. We're gonna talk about various sections here and how to get past there. So you're gonna see obviously there are broken and missing sections of the track. And the only way to get over those is to jump right before you hit the upswing in the hill. If you jump while you're on the hill, you will lose momentum. You will not have enough speed to get over the hill here. So pay attention, duck, jump. We're gonna go up a hill. If you haven't gotten the extra lives, get them. If not, check this. Right before the jump or right at the, yeah, see? I did it while I was on the hill. I lost momentum. I didn't make it. 
Alright, and unfortunately, we do have a couple more deaths that we're going to incur here, so we're just going to make it easy on ourselves. We're going to speed past all of the ugliness that you don't want to see, and then we're going to pick up at the point where we do complete this. So here we go. So just in case you haven't already figured this out, we're going to put all of the tips up on screen so you know exactly when to duck and exactly when to jump. So right about here, easy stuff, right? So get the extra lives if you haven't already gotten them. Get the point pickups. And our first major issue is going to be coming after the water pit. You're going to duck and then jump. Perfect. Just like that, right? Now, we're going to go down up one more time. Here comes our first major jump. Jump before that hill. Duck, jump, duck. So duck, jump, duck. Then you're going to have two ugly tent tunnels here. Go through them. Do not jump. That's an easy mistake to make if you've never played it. Go down and do another water pit. Okay, you have another life you could possibly get here. Now, you're going to duck three times. Here's one. Here's two. Here comes the third one right here. Go up a hill. Now, this is where most people will lose it. You're going to jump, duck, and you're going to jump two more times. Jump here, jump here over the spike. That spike usually gets me almost every time. Duck at the top. That's a very easy one to see coming. There's no reason you can't get that one. Now, that should pretty much be it, if I'm not mistaken. In fact, it is. You're rewarded with some point pickups. And that's it. That's the end of the level. So, provided you can get past the final tricky spots there with the two gaps in the track, nothing you can't handle. You will certainly lose a couple of lives here, even if you know what's coming. So, just be prepared for it. That's why it's important to stock up on lives in the first place. All right, now this next level is asking us to find some keys to open doors. This is a very straightforward level for the most part. There's a couple tricks I will show you. You're going to go up this first elevator and over to the left. All of the future doors will go over to the right. All right, so the way this works again, you're going to get as many keys as you can to advance the level. Now, this first section here is going to introduce you to these swinging clouds, and you have to get on them because if you try to go across the normal way, you will die. Now, you can get up here, provided you know how to double jump and double screw up these walls here. And you might ask, what's up here? Well, let's take a look. You have these spike traps. You have this ugly, stupid clown. Then you go all the way across. You have this parachute that takes you down to some stars. So it's kind of pointless. You double screw yourself up the wall just to get some stars. Is it really worth it? Not really. So watch out. Go down the ladder. And you're just going to have a series of a couple simple enemies. Some spike traps here. Now, these are very simple spike traps. You just have to be sure that you're jumping in an up screw motion, not a down screw. There's your key. Get it before the fireman can shoot his breath at you and damage or kill you. And just continue to move back the way that you came. Go across the spikes, up the ladder, and you're going to make your way all the way back to the initial elevator with the locked door at the bottom. And we will continue with the next part of the level. Honestly, the first few doors and sections that you go through here shouldn't be that bad. There are a few traps, obviously, and once you know what they are, you should be able to get by them almost every single time. So we're going all the way back down the shaft. Going through, there's the door. You're going to have a nice little red bridge with no enemies here. Just go across. There's another door. Let's go up and take the shaft all the way over to the right. Now, you're going to go down these holes. There will be these trampolines. Stay on the far edges of them so you don't accidentally bounce up. If you are bouncing through the spikes, you're almost guaranteed to take a death. So be very careful with that. And continue to bounce up the trampolines here. There are some interesting sections of enemies and spikes to be aware of. So here... You're going to be able to jump across and you have to use the screw jump quite a few times actually so just be aware of this you can go up here if you like to there are some point pickups go across you're going to find some tough enemies here with more point pickups and health power-ups you don't really need them so this section up top is not necessary i'm just showing it to you for the heck of it now you can go down there let's see what we got down here anything of interest of course there are points you're going to continue to go down there are more enemies and most importantly is the key so there's your key pick it up go all the way back to where you initially came through the elevator shaft and we're going to continue on with the next part of this level here so just go down all the way across now here move over to the right get this flying wing icon go all the way up there's an extra hidden life most people forget that's there you will absolutely want that as you continue on with the next few sections of the game so stock up on the lives bounce yourself all the way back up and when you're able to go back down the elevator shaft just like this and continue on with the next section of the level now, let's see what kind of nasty tricks and surprises they got for us here. Let's go up the shaft, continue on over to the right, and down, down, down. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Ooh, this is pretty ugly. Now, you're going to have a cannon, right? You can pick three different holes to jump up, kind of like 1.5 if you remember that one. I'll make this easy for you. Go up the middle one. If you go up the left or right one, there are things that you could get, but there's also spike traps if you don't know how to finesse yourself. So if you don't want to worry about it, just go up the middle. 
and work your way up. Be careful of the enemies. Continue to move up, and then eventually you will get to the key at the very, very top section here. So you're going to see it. It's up to the left. Ooh, be careful. That is a hidden floor, or a false floor, much like Castlevania 2. I absolutely hate those. But there's your key. You could go down the false floor right here if you really wanted to, but I really despise those. So we're going to take the intended way and go down the ladder, go down the next one, go all the way down the hole here, and make our way back to the elevator shaft and continue on with the next part of this level here. So as you can see, if you're looking very closely, there are item pickups, maybe an extra life here, but it's honestly not worth it in my honest opinion. That is a death trap that I usually catch myself dying at more often than not. So I'm not going to take the chance right here. We'll go up the balloon. Don't go up too high and get killed by the spikes. And we'll go through the door, continue on with the next part of the level here. Now we've got two major sections left. This first one coming up is arguably the toughest of the remaining ones. You be the judge. So we're going to go across. Now you think back to the first door, the first section here. Remember we had those swinging clouds we had to go across? This one is definitely more difficult than that. So check this out. You're going to have one when it decides to show up. You're going to have two. And then you're going to have three. And I believe there's four here. So yeah, they're very close to each other. They're not that hard to get across. But just remember you're probably going to be thinking, oh, there's only two, I can jump off after the second one, right? No, there are more than two, so just use your eyes and get through the sections. So, really, now it's combining a lot of the stuff that you've seen previously. We have these up and down spike traps, there's an extra life at the end, that's kind of nice. And way down at the bottom, you're going to have a key. This is an ugly key to get. You have to screw yourself over and then push back. Now, see what I did there? I got the key hit the wall and screw jumped myself back off the wall. That is a very tricky maneuver to pull off there, but if you play the game a while, you're able to do it, go for it. If not, you're gonna have to screw jump, get the key, and then hope you can get back over in time before you die by just using the D-pad. It's a very difficult, ugly section that the developers came up with, but hey, we got the key without dying, so that's all that matters here. Now you could die if you wanted to, it'll take you right past all this ugly stuff. You know, do what you want to do, it's up to you, but don't waste the life if you can help it. You're going to need those lives later in this game, trust me. Alright, go back down the shaft, and we are now into the final section of this level, if memory serves me correctly, and yes it does. We're going to go up. Now pay attention here, the intended path is to go right there, but don't. Go down and through the false wall. Pick up the point power-ups. What's up there on the top? Health power-ups, point pickups. Not that they're bad, but it's not going to lead you to the exit of the level here. Now, remember, we only have to get to the end of the level. There's no actual hoops we have to jump through. There's no star platforms. By the way, that's the exit. We only have to get to the exit of the level and then finish it. So why waste time? We're going to go all the way, kill the enemies that you see if they get in your path, go through these tunnels. You could go up top here. There are point pickups, and they're pretty nice ones. Those cupcakes are 300 points apiece. And you can see we're getting pretty close to another extra life here at 75,000 points. Now we have some balloons we're going to take up, and there are some spike platforms here with coming from the top and the sides. There's an extra life, that was nice to get. Be very, very cautious here, it's very easy to lose a life if you are not good with those screw jumps, so go up over here. We're going to have another ugly section if you're not careful with the spikes, and we've completed the level. Thankfully that's over and done with. So we have two more levels here, a boss, and then the first stage of the final level that we have to complete. So we're getting pretty close. We're now at 2.4. This is Ride the Rotor. Now you think back to the roller coaster, right? This is just as ugly, if not worse than that. If you don't know the path you have to follow, you will be losing lives and it's going to suck hard. Now, check this out. It's going to take you up and down. You need to use the D-pad to go up and down as the auto-scroller takes you through the ride here. So it was up, down, up, down. That first part was very easy. Now the second part here is just simply moving through the level, killing enemies and collecting points. This isn't too bad. What is going to be bad is the later ride rotor sections. There are another two, if I'm not mistaken, that you have to worry about. And right about here, there's an extra life to get. There are actually plenty of opportunities to get extra lives in this level here. And even if you take a hit, like right there, it's not a big deal because there's plenty of opportunities to get extra point, health point power-ups, I should say. So there's no reason that you should be dying in this level short of failing on the ride rotor section, which we're going to be coming up on the next one right about here. Make sure you hit those checkpoints. Now check this out. Ooh, they're getting tricky now. They got two of them. Normally you think it's up, down, up, down because there's one wall, one wall, one wall. No, now they're throwing in two. They're getting kind of ugly here. So we're going to go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. 
and that's it. Technically on the last one, you don't even have to worry about pressing down, the game will do it automatically for you. So, now you can see they're getting pretty tricky here, it's kind of like Battletoad, Turbo Tunnel, coming at you full force. And by the way, make sure you get those extra lives there, you're going to have quite a few of them, that was another nice little reward for finishing the rotor section, and trust me, you're going to lose a life or two here, even if you watch the video, unless you've got really good timing and reflexes, so take advantage, once again, of all the extra lives that this game is going to give you here, so... I don't know why, but this section right here, I have a hard time screwing uh, the enemies here with the attacks, so whatever. Just be very cautious with those. You know, just walk under them or walk past them if you can. Kill them if you absolutely must. Although, of course, they do give points. And as you can see, we've gotten, what, 82,000 points. We've gotten four extra lives just on points. Now, you're going to notice I'm moving kind of tentatively and slow here, right? And that's for a couple reasons. Number one, sometimes, even if you've played this game a lot, sometimes you might forget what's coming up. And it's just not worth it when you have to get to a certain checkpoint without using a continue and you want to play very cautious and safely. There's no harm in doing that because, once again, there is no true time limit in this game. Now, yes, there is a timer in the bottom right, but even if you run out of time, it's not going to penalize you and cost you a life. So, it only gives you points. Now, obviously, points are important because you get lives, but... The most important thing to know is that you won't die if the timer runs out. Now, you can go up here, you can get a health power if you need it. Not really necessary because, oh by the way, this is a bouncy ball. Nice little power up to have. We can talk more about that later, but it's not going to matter because guess what? You're probably going to die right here on the rotor section. Fortunately, it's the last one. Now, I do take a couple of deaths here. I'll let them play out. Now, pay attention here. You're going to have double walls. So, here's the section. Here's the way it goes. Pay very close attention. You may want to slow this video down. You're going to go... Pass one, up, down, up, down. They're gonna go faster too. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Woo, up, down again. Man, that's fast. Once you get to the end, you are rewarded with a cupcake. Oh, thank you so much. And there's the exit. So yeah, definitely, I encourage you to slow that section down there. But I put the things up on the screen as well so you can figure out exactly when to move up and down. And they have to go fast as well. Moving on, fun park bonus section, stay alive, oh this is cool. Now again, this is a bonus section, you don't have to get to the end to complete it. The longer you stay alive and you can you know, keep yourself on the track, the more bonus points and extra lives you will earn, so you know, don't feel bad if you don't finish it. If you want to intentionally take a death, you could, although I think it's kind of silly and pointless. Get all the points and lives that you can, I think you can get at least five if you're really good and you can finish this, if not more. Honestly, I've never completed the bonus section, so I couldn't really tell you. Because uh, when you get here, you only get one chance at it. You don't get multiple chances. So be very careful and cautious. Or just take the death if you don't really care and you want to complete the rest of the game. Although, that's probably not very smart. And I've got, what, 23 lives right now. That is pretty dang good. And, like I said, when you die here, it doesn't count as a real death, so don't feel bad. Whatever, walk of shame. Bonus act failed, who cares? All right, now we're getting back to the real game here. We're into World 2.5, and they are asking us to go ahead and jump through 25 magic hoops. So we've already done this objective in the past. We know what to expect. And much like in the circus, they're going to come in bunches and pairs and groupings. So it's nothing we haven't seen before. It's nothing we can't handle. Now, you could opt to try and jump up there. In fact, I don't know if it's possible, honestly, unless you can double jump. But it's not required because that's not the intended pathway anyway. All right, now 25 hoops. Just be very careful, don't intentionally skip over a section because you don't want to get to the end of this level and not have a ring missed. So you're going to go over to the left, get your first checkpoint, there's your first ring right there, probably multiple rings, so go all the way up the ladder, you're going to jump down through these rings and we count one, two, three, four, yes, four rings, kill the enemy, don't accidentally get hit as you're doing it like that, so go all the way back up. And we're going to jump through four of these rings, knocking our total required down to 21. And we're going to continue on up this stupid ladder again for the third time now. Damn, this gets annoying. You can jump yourself up the ladder if you want to, but you can also fall down the ladder as well. Now here, we have another section with an enemy on top of some rings. There's three more, down to 18. Going to continue moving on. We're going to have a little Ferris wheel ride to go up, which will lead us to some more rings and enemies. So let's jump on that stupid thing. What do we got up here? What kind of lovely, nasty surprises? More enemies. Pretty simple, not too tough. We're going to keep moving on to a checkpoint, and here you're going to have a little diving board to some rings. How many? We got one, two, three. We're down to 15 rings now, so we've gotten 10 of them already. And some health pickups. Don't go through that gate on the right. It will cause you to backtrack and climb the ladder again for a fourth time. Please don't do it. 
Okay, we're gonna cross over this bridge to another checkpoint, and we're getting pretty close to some more rings. Just a couple more simple enemies guarding the bridge. So take them out. Nothing too complicated. Now we have an elevator we're gonna ride up here. We're on the far left side of the map right about now, and this is going to start getting more difficult pretty soon. But for now, jump through the single ring. I don't know why they have single rings here. Just give us multiple groupings, please. All right, you're gonna have an enemy on top of some spikes. There's a couple more rings for you. We're gonna have a couple more over these spike shafts. Three this time. Notice how it went one, then two, then three. Let's see what we've got over here. One, two, three more. And then we're gonna have six rings. I think there's one more grouping of three we have to get through. But before we do that, more checkpoints. I love those stupid firemen. And we're getting pretty close, and I don't know why I did that. That was completely dumb and stupid. But fortunately, there was a checkpoint right there. And we're still doing really good on lives. We've got, what, 22 lives right now? And we picked up an invincibility star, so that's kind of nice. Just move fast. The only bad thing about this, per se, is that you can't kill the enemies. It just lets you move right through them as if they're not even there. So, whatever. You take the good with the bad. All right, keep on moving through. A couple more enemies to worry about. we got some spikes hazards here. Nothing you haven't seen before. Now, here's a grouping of three rings. Get to the top. Ooh, lord. We almost fell on the spikes, so be very cautious of that. One more jump ought to do it. You're going to have to move to avoid the spike ceiling. I've taken a couple deaths there before. All right, we've got three rings left, and if memory serves me correctly... Ooh, this section is ugly. I lost quite a few lives here. I hate this section with a passion. Now, watch how this works. You have to get on the Ferris wheel, jump through the gap, and get onto another Ferris wheel without hitting the spike ceiling or spike floor. You need to be very, very well-versed with the controls in this game by this point. This is a death trap if I've ever seen one. It will catch you off guard. And Okay, that's a bunch of BS. I landed on that stupid pod. If it's not directly on the pod, you will fall through it. And hit detection in this game is atrocious at times. And it's one of the reasons that the challenge factor is needlessly higher than it should be. <sighs> Good lord. How many times have we died at this section already? At least three? Probably a few more if my memory serves me correctly here. Let's see if we can get through. Good lord. Yeah, now, you're probably wondering, you could go left there too, right? Now... If I remember correctly, there is an extra live you can get. It's not necessary, though, and it doesn't take you to the end of the level. So we finally get through that. Hope I never have to play that section again. Uh, now, this section right here is another death trap if you're not paying attention. Okay? Most people are paying attention to the spikes on the floor and not seeing the spikes on the ceiling here because they're off screen. Now, that was dumb. I just spiked myself into the floor because I wasn't thinking. I was thinking about the spikes on the floor and not getting to the platform. Ooh, this is bad. The inertia of the screw jumps will cause you to miss sometimes oh lord we're just having a bad run of things right now not a whole lot you can do just nerves getting me bad luck bad controls just bad everything bad section thankfully we have a stockpile of lives right now and we can afford these stupid deaths but certainly take advantage of this video and play it back watch it back so you don't have to make the mistakes that i made here now, we're getting pretty close to the end. We're going to get on top of this tent here, and you're going to go up. Now, you could go over to the right if you want to. There's nothing but health power-ups guarded by a fireman. So, it's kind of pointless because as soon as you get them, you're going to lose them. So, don't even worry about it. So, just continue on over to the left, and we're approaching the end of this level here. So, there's a big ladder to climb. Wall to the right, which means you have to move left. There is a diving board here, and one, two, three. There it is. There are the final few rings. So, we are finally done with that. We're going to continue to move through the pool here. There are some enemies that we cannot hit, unfortunately. So just continue to move. Go on over. And right now, we just have to get to the exit here because we've gotten all the rings, obviously. So you're going to have one final nasty section here, and this is where the pain comes back again. So thankfully, we have the save point right here. We're going to head back over to the left. Now, pay attention here. You have these clouds that are going to move up and over. And in between the clouds, where you would normally jump onto the next one, if you think back to 2, 3, I believe, before the rotors, you could just walk right over. Unfortunately, you can't do that here. So the clouds are going to take you over, and you're going to have spike traps in between. So you have to jump over the spikes and get onto the clouds, if this makes any sense. So check and see what I'm talking about right here. As soon as the cloud comes, jump on top of it. Watch out for the spike barrier in between. Jump over to the next cloud. Jump over the spike on the next one. This is ugly. I hate this section. You will lose a life or two here if you are not expecting it, and most people aren't. All right, we got the checkpoint, and I believe this is the final section here. So just make your way up the platforms. Got some balloons. 
nothing you shouldn't be able to handle by this point if you've gotten this far in the game. So get the power-ups, take the balloon all the way up, and thankfully we have just completed this section and we are now going to face the boss of the fun park. <laughs> yeah, pretty fun, right? Alright, so that's over and done with, and believe it or not, we are through the thick of it. Yes, we have a boss, yes, we have one final stage to go, but they're nothing compared to what we've gotten through to this point. Now the boss is called Meet Mr. Bubbles. So Mr. Bubbles is a machine that will traverse a wall on the right side just like this. The way it works is you have to light up his nose, make him blink red, and then once his nose is blinking red, you have to screw attack into his nose. So right now you just have to hit it, and anytime he starts crying like this, he's crying acidic tears basically, I guess. And the tears will hurt you, so you can't be hit by the tears. Now if you stand right in the middle, that hand will try to grab you, and if it does, it will cause a hit. Now right now, he can't get you on the far left, which is good, but you can't damage him on the far left. So you're going to have to put yourself in harm's way in order to get the hits here. So that's really all it is. You just have to wait until he gets there. As soon as he blinks red, hit him, and that's all it is. So just keep on doing that, follow the process the entire way through. This will be a bit of a slog fest, if that makes any sense. So you just have to wait for him to come back up. The only other piece of advice I could really give you here as we take a death is to not jump on his head. You will get hit, you will get hurt, take deaths by jumping on the head. You gotta be really careful and cautious and time your attacks well so that you hit his nose. And remember, you won't actually cause damage to him unless his nose is blinking red. So many times it will take two hits to cause damage to him, just like that. So now that we've gotten that done out of the way, there's really not much else to see here besides waiting for all of the hits to happen. So right now, what do we got? We got 14 lives left. Pretty damn sure we're not going to die 14 more times. So we're just going to fast forward to the end of this. And we'll see you on the flip side in world number three. And about a minute later, we finally take out the boss. So that's over and done with. And we are now into the final stage of this challenge here, which is going into the woods, as you're about to see. So a nice little change of scenery once again. And fortunately, the objective is very simple. Just find the exit. So we just have to traverse our way through the woods to the end point, and the challenge will be completed. So no star platforms, no rings, no ridiculous find the keys, nothing. Now, because this is the final level, and you may not know this very well, Obviously, you're probably going to want to take this level a little bit slow. Now, fortunately, as you can see, I've got 14 extra lives here, so I could afford to go quickly if I really wanted to. But I will tell you, the first time I played this level and got this far, I got here with zero lives. I wasn't doing nearly as well as I'm doing now. So I definitely took this very slow and tentative, and even now, you can probably tell I'm taking this level very tentative as well. So here's the trick with this. You want to stay low and go over to the right. Eventually, you will come to a big, thick tree, and at that point, you're going to go down the tree and over to the left. So here you have a little catapult you could use. There's nothing up there but stars. You know, take it if you want to. It's not really necessary. So we're going to keep on moving over once we get to this tree. And I think it's right here. Yes, it is. So we're going to go down the tree. And I said over to the left. That's going to lead us to the exit eventually. Now, there will be some tricky, ugly spike sections here and some enemies. Fortunately, water doesn't kill you in this game. So feel free to jump in, take a spin, take a swim if you want to. Keep on moving over. There are some spikes right there. Obviously, do not jump on them. They will kill you instantly. Keep on moving over with the trampolines. Just, you know, take your time on this. As I've said many times, oh, by the way, make sure you jump over that. That's a nasty trap. You have spikes on a bridge that will hit you if you're not paying attention, and almost everyone does get hit there. And we're pretty close right now. I gotta say, we've got some more platforms. Keep on moving over. There's a telephone pole. And as you get on top of this, you can screw jump your way across. Normally, you expect a unicycle. Clearly, you're not going to see that here because we're not in the circus anymore. And we're going to go down the pole, continue moving over right. You have more of these catapults. They're not going to give you anything special aside from point power-ups. So just pick up as many as you can. Move yourself over to the left. And we are basically done, I believe. The exit to this level should be right down here. I'm moving kind of tentative. Just a couple more simple enemies to take out. Go down this hill. You can pretty much run at full speed. And there's the exit. Congratulations! Nearly an hour later, we have finally finished the Arrow the Acrobat Pro Challenge. And I am very happy to say that although this game is very fun, it is in the books, and I am not likely to play this game again anytime soon. If you've managed to stick around with me for this long, thank you so much. I really appreciate your presence and watching the videos, as always. Take care, and we will see you in the next challenge, which I believe will finally be Link's Awakening. We'll see you then.